Would you want a goose as a husband? Um, I don't think that would be legal. Hi, I'm Charlotte, and today I'm here with... Holly. I'm the author of a book called The Husband. And today we're going to be playing Untitled Goose Game, which Holly told us she really wanted to play with us. <laughs> so you are a game designer before coming to the writing novels world. I am, I am. A uh, mix of uh, video games and tabletop games and games for museums and, and arts festivals and all sorts of bits and pieces. It's a very difficult <laughs> job to explain and uh, sort of become more complicated now because I also have to go, oh, and I'm a novelist. All right, and just to clarify, Holly is the oranger goose and I'm the slightly redder goose. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, how did you get into the game design world? Uh, slightly by accident, honestly. I had uh, moved to London from Adelaide in Australia, where I'm from, and I'd been there, I don't know, maybe a year, and I liked it, but it was still a bit weird and didn't quite feel like home. And then a friend of mine signed us up for a thing called Journey to the End of the Night, which I didn't really know what it was, but uh, I turned up with three other friends outside an abandoned warehouse in Wapping and there are 150 other people there and they all had white armbands on. We were given this map of London, right across London, with a bunch of checkpoints and told that we had to, to get to them in order, get to the final one on the banks of the Thames by midnight because the tide would come in at midnight and if we weren't there by then it was too late. Uh, so that was all reasonably straightforward and then these ominous looking people in running shoes with red ribbons on their arms sort of came out from the warehouse and we got the additional rule that they would be chasing us and that if they caught us we would become one of them we would lose our white ribbon we'd get a red ribbon we would turn on our former allies and and become one of the chasers and try to hunt everyone else down and it was just a really weird, silly, extraordinary evening. Like my legs were aching at the end of it. I was still like jumping when I saw someone wearing red out of the corner of my eye a week later. And it kind of made me feel at home in, Lon in London in a way that I hadn't previously. This thing where, where usually you only play when you feel comfortable in a place. So my easily tricked brain was like, oh, you played a big game here. This must be home in some sense. I really enjoyed it and I wrote to the people who'd run it and said, hey, this was fun, are you doing anything else like this? Um, can I get involved in some way? And we started running occasional games events for trying out new things. And then I started telling people I was a game designer and eventually people started paying me to be a game designer and it became true. So. Yeah, slightly weird roundabout way. That is a very complicated <laughs> backstory. <laughs> and so I imagine being a game designer keeps you super busy. What made you go, I'm going to add writing a novel on top of this? <laughs> well, I started writing the novel early in the pandemic when, because I do a lot of live events and games for festivals and museums and things like that, there was, was less work on generally. And also I spent some of the pandemic, some of the early pandemic in Australia because with my, I'd been back visiting my family when everything kicked off. And for quite a while, there just weren't really any planes going anywhere. There weren't flights in and out, especially of Australia. So you're sort of sitting around there going, well, my work isn't really happening and nothing's really happening. And I've always kind of thought, oh, maybe one day I'll write a novel, and if not now, then, then when? Might as well give it a go. And so what is The Husbands about? The Husbands is about a woman named Lauren whose attic starts producing husbands for her, essentially. She gets home one night and finds a weird man in her house and gradually figures out that he is somehow her husband. And then she figures out that when he goes into the into the attic. <laughs> Sorry, it's very complicated to describe this while also trying to knock over a spade. 
when he goes into the attic, he becomes a different man and he returns as a new husband and her life is a little bit different as well. And then, you know, various adventures ensue. At first it's great because she's got her friend's wedding coming up and it's nice to be able to try to find a good husband to take instead of having to go on her own. But also it turns out because, because you know, it wouldn't be much of a book if it was just, oh, and then it was lovely and fairly straightforward and she found the perfect husband and that was all very nice. Things go wrong. It turns out to not be an unmixed blessing to have a magical attic that will create an infinite variety of men for you. And uh, events proceed. This is one of the reasons I thought this would be fun to talk about, that this is a, this is a game that's set in the UK, but it's made by Australians. Uh -huh. and, and when you grow up in Australia, at least when you grew up in Australia in the 80s and 90s, there's a real... Um, you, you got a lot of media from the US and also from the UK. And so you, there's a lot of stuff that, that exists in the world, but that you only ever see on television or in books. So things like <laughs> this sort of, um, this guy with his flat cap and this sort of, oh, it's a garden, it's got jam sitting on it, there's a thermos, all of that kind of thing, is, is very much an Australian's view of, of the UK as fictionalised through, through children's books and children's media. And you can kind of spot that because this icebox here is very much shaped like an Australian icebox. You don't really need that in the UK because the weather's not quite there. And this corrugated iron, like water, water tank here, again, is something that's very, very common in Australia and not so common in the UK. And so it's this amazing mix of, of things that the designers would have been around in the world and things that they would have absorbed from, from British media as, as children. And I think like with the husbands, the attic in that is very much like we don't have attics in Australia, really. I never saw an attic in Australia. I never saw an attic until I was in the UK. Like, why would you have a room up there? It's going to be hot and it's going to be full of spiders. And so getting to the UK and then just a bunch of people have an attic. They have this room that just exists above their house but they don't really know what's in there and they don't go up very often and it's really hard to get into. And then they're just, oh, maybe that's in the attic. I don't know. Or like, oh yeah, I heard a weird noise from the attic. Oh well. And yeah, it just seems like a, a strange magic thing that I only ever really encountered in books. Yeah, something I love about the husbands yeah. is just Lauren's like evolving list of excuses to send husbands <laughs> up into the attic. <laughs> I've forgotten what we're trying to achieve here right now. With the like, in what way are we trying to upset this gardener? Yeah, I know. Let's see. Okay. We have to steal, steal his keys, keys. Make him wear his sun hat. Rake in the lake. Forget how exactly we distract him to get rake in the lake. Yeah. I guess there are two of us, so. He's very upset about this in some way. So maybe if we drag that further away. We'll try and get it out of the lake. Where even is our rake? But yeah, when I first read just the synopsis of The Husbands, it definitely made me think, you know, kind of like dating games. Yeah. Was that something yeah. you ever kind of thought about while? Um, not really, except in as much as the sort of the dating apps are very structured using some of that kind of compulsive what happens now, better keep swiping, better better see what happens, sort of game design. Yeah, uh, I mean, it is kind of, Lauren's experience is like the ultimate game design, Monty Hall problem. <laughs> <laughs> Do you keep sending husbands back to see if you get something better? Oh, got the rank, nice. Mm. Oh no, oh no. no. Uh, See, I think maybe if I go over there and turn on the yeah, faucet. Yeah, maybe, and I can drag it. You're in. Ah, yes, excellent. God, it's been a while since I've played this. <laughs> but yeah, you were very eager. This was the first yeah. game you recommended. <laughs> uh, partly it's my, you know, 
Australian game design agenda. <laughs> and yeah, you do a lot of indie game design work. Yeah, um, and bits of writing and and that kind of thing. And I also curate events for mostly mostly independent games. One of the things that I enjoy about this game is that the very first time I played it was at an event that I was helping to put on and we had it in the corner of a, a big room and it was a sort of a prototype. The game wasn't out yet. So at one point we had some some talks happening in the room and we muted all of the games, but somehow we had not successfully muted the honk of the geese. So the music wasn't playing, nothing else was happening, but whenever anyone tried to, to press the honk button, the geese would honk and it would reverberate through this hall while people were trying to do these like quite serious game design talks. And people really wanted to play it, right? Because the game wasn't out yet. This was their only chance to play it. And they'd try to avoid hon pressing the honk button, but it's hard to remember what the honk button is when you're just panicked because you've been accidentally honking in this enormous hole. I feel and, like that's kind of yeah. a like meta level of right? the game. <laughs> right? Even even <laughs> when you try to mute it, the, the goose cannot be stopped. Would you want a goose as a husband? I would not want a goose <laughs> as a husband. Um, I don't think that would be legal. Uh, I don't think it would be practical. I, I live in a terrace house in, in London. The keyhole is quite high up. I don't know how the goose would get in and out. I don't think the geese would be able to reach to, to do their turn at stacking the dishwasher or be willing to do so if they could. I would say even if you're just picking from like all birds in the world as a husband, probably still not a goose. Yeah, I don't think Lauren would handle it well if... No. No, how do you get a goose back into the attic as well? You can't just go, oh, honey, could you put this back up into the attic? Or did you hear that weird noise? Though she does want a man who's either very assured of himself or very not assured of himself. And yeah. Geese yeah. are confident. That is true. Geese are very confident. I've got that going for them. I think, I think if we pull out a tulip, then he might bend over to yeah, replant we need it. need to do something that distracts him long and enough that we can get those keys. Yeah. And I have to ask, mm. do you have a vendetta against Mindhunter? <laughs> <laughs> I do not have a vendetta against Mindhunter. Um, but it just seemed the funniest show for her to be repeatedly having to watch with different husbands. Like we actually spent a lot of time running through like with my editors because because you know the book set basically now when I when I started writing it, Mindhunter was a, a bigger thing. Going, is there a a different, more contemporary show that would be funnier? And yeah just couldn't come up with one, had to stick to Mindhunter. Seemed like the worst thing to have to repeatedly watch with different men. I haven't seen it. I hear it's quite good. <laughs> Thinking about writing craft, I yeah. always find like, you know, it's easy to come up with a premise for a novel. Mm -hmm. It's then hard to kind of like execute that into a full work. How did that work for the husbands? Like, did you know kind of the overall trajectory of it? I didn't really, no. What I basically did was just started writing different husbands and think of different ways that things could go wrong. Ah, oh, you got them. <laughs> How do I get his hat to come off? I can't uh, figure it out. I feel like there's something, what would make him like get the hat? I, I think if this hat falls off, he'll put the sun hat on but I don't know how to get that hat to fall off. I thought maybe if he bent over to, to pull the tulips back in, but that didn't work. I guess maybe we, if he bends over, we could take the hat. Oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> yes. 
Can I can I get away with it in time? <laughs> Send it to the lake. Uh, how do I run again? <laughs> I think it's X. Oh no! I also feel like <laughs> if this happened to me as a gardener, I would just give up for the day. Yeah, yeah. He's very committed. He's also easily, like, his priorities are not get the goose out. His priorities are fix the uh, thing that the goose has just done, which I think shows, like, lack of long-term planning. I mean, this is what you need a carter for, to yeah. come pick up yeah. the goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wrote a lot of husbands, and then uh, once I had a huge array of them, started kind of thinking about what order they should come in and how it should fit together and and the arc of it, which I'd had some thoughts of while I was writing them, of course, but uh, hadn't exactly planned out in huge detail. I had this sort of material of lots of different husbands to to then work with. Um, I have the tool, but I don't know to what end. Hmm. And I didn't know what the end of the book was until until quite late on. Um, part of uh, this is game design sensibilities showing again here, I think. But initially, I had eight endings, and they were like, so Lauren's bad at making decisions, right? That's one of the things that the book is about. And so I figured, well, because she's bad at making decisions, maybe what she does is just develop a tool to be able to trick herself into making a decision. So maybe she. I feel like you're better at grabbing than I am, but maybe when he plants the tulip, you could have a oh, go yeah. at the hat. Yeah, we're nice geese. We're just going to yeah. let you do your garden. Just hanging out. Just hanging out. Yes, that's the moment. Incredible. Oh, no. Uh. <laughs> 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 it's not actually that difficult a game, but it is difficult to play while you're also trying to recount your uh, your process. Your life's work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something mm. I feel like no one expects until they get to this point that it's very yeah. hard to game and <laughs> talk at the same time. All right, we need okay. to do some sort of chaos that's enough that he has to deal with it while we take the hat. I think it's the times I've got it before, it's been when he's replanting the tulip, so I think that's the thing. It's just that we haven't quite got it together with the running yet. So he'll bend over, he'll replant it while he's bent over. We can grab the hat, maybe. I'm not even doing anything to you, sir. <laughs> I'm just a pleasant goose. Yes, I finally managed to, to remember how to run and hold at the same time. No, no! Ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, too overconfident. Or maybe what we need to do is like drag something else towards the lake so like the hat is closer. I just, I really think the problem is not our understanding but our execution. <sighs> I feel like if we could just consistently run after having grabbed a hat, which is not something I previously realized to be so challenging. I guess it's also, we both have played this single player. We've yeah, never yeah, yeah. done two no, player before. No, it's true. Oh, he's so suspicious of us. Mm. I mean, you should always be suspicious of a goose. <laughs> He's too fast. Well, it looks like we are not going to beat the gardener today. <laughs> it's devastating. What would you like to tell people about why they should check out the husbands? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> like, I'm a goose now. I can't think yeah, about writing. I'm better at writing than I am at stealing hats. Uh, it's got jokes in it. Uh, There's lots of husbands. Uh, if you read the husbands, you will understand all of your <laughs> sidelong references to things that happen within it. Yeah, you'll be able to experience yeah. this on a new level. <laughs> you can get to the end and think, 
how did this originally have eight endings? That seems like a terrible idea, which it was, to be clear, like absolutely terrible. Uh, my concept there, it was very high concept, was that instead of making a decision, Lauren would flip a coin three times and do the thing that that told her to. And so if she got tails, tails, heads, she'd do that. That would have a different ending for each possible arrangement of, of results there. And so the implicit invitation to the player is to, to flip a coin three times and then read the ending that corresponds. And that would be the, the true ending to them. I didn't even get to the point of showing anyone that, that it was a very bad idea. And also it's really hard to think of eight endings that aren't terrible. So some of them were really bad. I would have loved to see the editor reaction to that. <laughs> so yeah, be sure to check out The Husbands. It's coming out soon and it is an absolutely delightful read. Thank you so much for gaming with me, Holly. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. It's been a lovely time.